you might have received this most frequently given advice which says dream big but those who give us this advice never tell us how to i remember i was 12 years old my mother taught me two really really important things so i thought that i must share those two things with you because these really helped me throughout my journey the first thing was how to dream big and secondly the power of manifestation i was born in rahim yar khan a small city in southern punjab pakistan as i mentioned earlier i was 12 years old and this incident happened during my summer break when all my friends had gone for summer vacations and i didn't go couldn't go that made me really sad and throughout that summer break i went quiet i remember one night i was sitting in my garden outside looking at the stars quietly my mother knew something was off she knew i was sad so she came outside and she sat right next to me and asked me what is it what is bothering you and i being a 12 year old started cribbing and complaining about everything i told her that i wish i could go for a vacation like my friends or maybe i'm not lucky enough as my friends i wish i was born in a bigger better city and my complaints kept going on and on my mother sat next to me quietly patiently and she listened to all that i had to say she didn't say a word and after a few minutes she said look what's up there do you see an airplane going i looked at the sky and i said yes she smiled and she said that's muniba's airplane going somewhere i looked at my mother and i said this is not funny you don't have to try to make me laugh because i'm really sad she smiled again and she repeated the same words again she said look that's muniba's flight going somewhere i told her that i cannot even go in a train let alone going somewhere in an airplane stop this is not funny she smiled again and repeated what she said Look, that's Muniba's flight going somewhere. Instead of making me happy, I started crying more and I said, "Mama, you will never understand what I'm going through." So I went in my room and I cried some more. Well, years and years went by and that 12-year-old became me. I was invited by UN Women to share my story globally. at UN Women headquarters in New York. So when I was leaving for US for the very first time in my life, when I was leaving for the airport, I remember I gave a big hug to my mother. And when I was leaving, she held my hand tight and she said, "So, Muniba's flight has finally arrived." That moment was one of the most defining moments because in that moment i realized that when i said that mama you will never understand what i'm going through my mother exactly knew what i was going through how in such a subtle and beautiful way she was teaching me the power of manifestation how in such a beautiful way she made me realize that even a girl in a small town has the power to dream big and while i was busy complaining My mother was manifesting my best future by repeating one sentence over and over again. So yes, today if I come across as a dreamer or as a humble achiever, it's all because of my mother. But here is a question. Did Muniba's flight come that easy? The answer is no. There is no such thing as instant dream fulfillment dreaming big is the first step but if you want to achieve that dream it requires each and every ounce of your energy you don't get lucky overnight in fact the harder you work the luckier you get 
So if you want to dream big, go ahead. But make sure you need to work hard as much as possible. I would like to dedicate this video to my amazing mother who made me what I am today. And let me say this, that all that I am and I aim and hope to be, I owe it to my mother. This video is also for all those amazing mothers who believe in their children, who teach their children to dream big. So yes, this is the time to dream big. This is the time to aim high, to work hard, and to believe in yourself. I'm on government assistance and I run out of money and I had to buy Pampers for Jelani. And I had $11.42 in the bank. And I remember wrapping my son in a towel for two days. I remember the second day, like you said, I had my, my hand on Jelani's stomach and I said, don't worry, baby. Mommy will never be this broke or broken again. And that day, what shifted for me was I was willing, and I don't know if this is gonna sound crazy, I was willing to completely die to any form of me that I had been so that I can birth the woman that I was becoming. The reason why a lot of people won't become who they want is because they're too attached to who they've been. And you hear it all the time when people say, I've always been this way. Okay, well, if that's working for you, keep doing that. I knew it wasn't working for me any longer. I had hit my version of rock bottom. So I was willing to let go of everything and everybody. See, another reason why people won't get there is because the doorway is for you to fit through. You're trying to carry everybody else through because you're trying to be rescue 911. And you got to rescue you first. I am much more valuable to my family and to my community because I was willing to let them go. Go through the door myself, teach myself, learn myself, condition myself, and then come back and get them. I'm much more valuable to them now. But I had to go through a window time of 10 years of judgment. You leaving us, hanging out with white people all the time. You going to these crazy countries. We, we don't know what you, I, I had to be willing to, to allow my conviction to make me inconvenienced. See, we want to grow, but we want to stay liked by everybody. I was willing to be my own rescue at the risk of your approval. But most of us aren't like that. Facebook is an example. We want to be liked. Well, I woke up and I like myself today, so your like is extra. My, my job is to like me first. I was willing to say every day, Lisa, you like you? Lisa, are you proud of you? Lisa, are you playing for loud? Every day before I checked in with anybody else. I was willing to inconvenience my entire life. My entire life. I was willing to disrupt my entire life to buy my future, to buy my possibility, to give my dream a chance. See, we're not supposed to tuck our dreams in on the, on the pillow when we get up in the morning. We're not supposed to leave them at home and go and fulfill somebody else's dream. We're not supposed to do that. That's not what we're wired to do. That's not who we are. Your human spirit doesn't care about the economy. The human spirit doesn't care that my son's father went to prison. My, the human spirit doesn't care what's happened to your family. The human spirit doesn't care about the past. You may have been molested or your family may have been broke or, or you may have been betrayed or you may have a divorce. Your human spirit doesn't care about any of that. Your human spirit simply says, What's our command for tomorrow? What do you want to create? It's not keeping score. Your brain is keeping score because your brain is designed to keep you safe. Your soul, your intuition, your human spirit is designed to make you soar. When you get to the edge, your brain will always tell you to step back. It's always going to tell you to step back because you can fall, always. It's gonna tell you step back. Because before you fail, the last time you did this, you saw someone else fail, you could hurt, you could be off work. It's gonna tell you, it's designed to keep you safe. So you have to be willing to play between your brain and your soul. And on some days, you gotta just listen to your soul. 
And you got to say, I'm going to leap. I'm going to get to the edge. Most people are at the edge and you're standing at the edge and you're watching everyone else fly. That's pit my ride. Watch my crib. All this stuff. You know, watching people's lives on Facebook. You're at the edge watching someone else live, wondering what it's going to be like when you jump without ever jumping. And I'm just here to tell you jump because only three things can happen. You're either going to jump and fly or you're going to jump and fall on something soft. Are you going to fall down hard? Either way, you're going to get back up. You already know you got what it takes to get back up. You're not, your greatest fear is not that you will fall. Your greatest fear is that you will live a full life and never fly. That you never leap. You're not afraid of dying. You're afraid of dying before the world sees who you really are. Before they really get your fingerprint. Before they really feel your breath. Before they really get your contribution. Before they really feel you. That's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to leave this place without us knowing you were here. All I'm doing is giving my, my dream a chance. And I'm not extraordinary. You don't get off the hook. You don't get to be let off the hook. I'm an ordinary woman who chooses every day to make one more extraordinary decision.